Welcome to this online presentation of Pragmatev Tracer. Pragmatev Tracer is a part of Pragmatev Studio Complete Environment that covers system modeling, design, and testing. Pragmatev Tracer covers requirements, properties, and execution traces. The original idea was first to generate live graphical traces of a system execution, whether it is coming from a real target or from a simulated model. The requirements of the system, the expected behavior, can also be described with the same graphical representation. The trace can easily be matched against the requirements. We also introduced a way to write the properties of the system in the same graphical representation. The properties can be verified on the traces. The graphical representation for the traces is based on the message sequence chart, called MSC. It is an international recommendation standardized by the International Telecommunication Union. In this diagram, entities are represented by vertical lines. Time flows from top to bottom and there are symbols for each important event of the entity execution such as states, messages or timers. In the tool, on the side, time indicators for each event are displayed. A requirement is an expected behavior of the system. The expected sequence of events is represented. Possible alternatives or loops can be graphically represented as well as time constraints. In this example, Instance 1 sends the M1 message to Instance 2. Then, Instance 2 can either reply M2 or M4. Both scenarios are correct. A property is a causal relation between several events. If or if not a cause, then or then not an effect. It is possible to write these causal relations with a set of prefixes on the events. In this example, if M1 is sent from instance 1 to instance 2, then if instance 2 replies M2, the property is verified. But if instance 2 replies M4, the property is not verified. These property notations are called the property sequence chart. It can describe expected components, wanted or unwanted messages, parallel behavior, alternative behavior, loops, time constraints, strict or loose sequence of events, wanted or unwanted chain constraints. That is a wanted or unwanted sequence of events. Pragmatev Tracer is a free tool that is part of Pragmatev Studio. That means you need to install Pragmatev Studio in order to be able to use Pragmatev Tracer. Pragmatev Studio runs on Windows, Linux or Mac. When launching Pragmatev Studio, the following window appears. The last quick button is a way to start a trace and the information is read from a socket. The port number on which the socket is read is defined in the preferences. It is also possible to read a file that contains the same information. For that matter, you must go to the Project menu and to the Import MSC Tracer sub-menu. It is also possible to read other trace formats. In that case, you need to add a child element to the project, select the requirements, and then the correct format you want to import. Once you have your traces, you can use the editor to edit them. You can, for example, expand or collapse instances, you can filter events, or you can copy and paste also some events. So we saw that we can generate the traces either from a model simulation, but also from a real target. For that matter, we provide a set of C macros that can do that automatically for you. That of course requires that you have a socket support on your target. 
once you have your traces, your specification, and your properties, you can match the specification against the traces, or you can verify the properties on the traces. For that, you will have a set of submenus we will see on the demonstration. So the demonstration will first go through generation of the trace through a socket, and then we will show how to make a simple comparison uh, between a trace and the specification, and then verify some properties. First some functional properties, then some non-functional properties, and then use the operators from the property sequence chart. Okay, let's start our demonstration. What we have here is Pragmatic Studio started. And here we have some Python instructions that will generate a trace. So it will first open a socket and send all these commands through the socket. So you can see the, the format of the commands that is sent. So for example, task created with a time uh, value, with uh, the name of the task and some ID, and same thing for message sent, message received, and so on. So what we will do is that uh, we will uh, copy all these instruction, okay? That we will copy into the, the the Python interpreter, and we will start here a trace that will uh, read on the sockets. So what I do here is just start Python, okay, and paste the information uh, that is in that file, and we can see that. The, the task created with ping, uh, with the ID is created in ID, and then the message sent ping is created at uh, the time value 100 and so on. So that's the, the type of, of instructions you can uh, generate in your executable to create a trace. So that was the first example, okay? Let's close this down and discard the, the generated file. Uh, and, and, and iconize this. And I'll show you some other example. Uh, here, uh, first, uh, let's verify a specification against uh, a trace. So we'll open this example, which is in the distribution you can find and play around with it. Uh, we have here a specification that says basically uh, what you expect from the system. So it says, you know, if you send M1 from instance 1 to instance 2, uh, well, the instance 2 can reply M2 or M4, okay? Uh, let's open a trace that has been generated and see if that conforms to the specification. The trace is very simple. It says M1 to M4, okay? So the way to do this is you have to go to your specification and click on that quick button to compare, okay? So in that case, it's not a basic graphical diff you're doing. It's a specification against trace. You specify the specification diagram and the trace diagram, and you launch the uh, comparison. And then what it will do is that it will open both windows and say, oh, if we have a match or not a match. So in, get, in that case, diagrams are matching. So it is conformed to the specification, okay? So it was what, quite simple, just to give you a first idea. Let's now do something a bit more complicated and use the uh, property sequence chart. So I will open from the history uh, another example, which is also in the distribution that contains several PSC that we are going to uh, match here. Um, let's uh, have the first one, the simplest one, uh, which is required of fail. And uh, let's have a look at the property. So the property here says that if you send M1 from instance 1 to instance 2, uh, then receiving back uh, M2 is correct, but M4 is not correct. So R is required and F is fail. So M2 correct, uh, M4 not correct. Uh, let's have a trace here that uh, basically combines both cases, you know, M1, M2, and then M1, M4, and see what it does. Okay, so we go to the property and compare the property against the trace. Then we have to select the property match submenu and trace uh, number two in that case, okay? So what we will have here as a result of the comparison is that uh, first it will say, okay, M1, M2 is 
correct. What about the next one? Ooh, M1, M4 is not correct. Okay, so it looks very simple in that example, but uh, it ca can get very complicated uh, in the in the real case very quickly. Okay, uh, let's now try another example because this was like a functional property. Let's try a non-functional property like a time constraint. Okay, a typical example is that you want uh, not to exceed an amount of time between two events, like between incoming message and outgoing message. I don't want time to be more than 50 units of time okay so when I have my real trace I get some timestamps on the trace uh, and then I can verify if the uh, non-functional property is verified so same story here we go to the compare diagrams select property match trace number three in that case and run one against the other and it will tell us if it is correct or not. Oh, and it is not correct because here we have between these two events more than 50 units of time. Okay, last example, a bit more complicated, uh, is uh, based on the chain constraints. Let's have a look first at the property and, and, and say a few words about it. The property says that if I receive, if A sends M1 to B, Okay, you can say required M3. So it should be followed by M3, except if M2 has been sent from A to B. Okay, that's a, a, a basic chain constraint example just to give you uh, an idea of what, it, of what it can do. Okay, so let's have a trace here that is uh, M1, M2, M3 and M1, M4, M3 and see if that matches the this property okay so same story go to property match select the correct trace and match and what we will see here is that there's a property match here in that sequence okay because here we have M2 between M1 and M3, so that does not match the property. But here we have M3 following M1, and in between we don't have M2. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea of what the PSC can do. Okay, so well, uh, thank you for watching this demonstration. Well, since the tool is free, you know, feel free to download it uh, on our website and, and try it out and, and send us uh, your feedback. Thank you very much.